ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by, leave us a comment, leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Cycles and Social Fest, I got a special guest, Andrea Up All Night from Failure Stop Night Shift. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about serial killers and murderers in general that end up having like, uh, uh, significant others that stick with them through like, even while they're in jail, like, uh, Ted Bundy was a main one that I got confused. Yeah. It was like, they're, they're still together. He m murdered like a lot of women and it, it's just one of those, uh, I don't, I don't, I, I, I just don't get it. It's like if someone, I had, I, I've broken up with people just because you know they didn't like uh, Star Wars. So <laughs> I, I don't need that negativity in my life. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Um, Ted Bundy's a fun one because they actually got married during his when he was on trial. Yeah. I was like, uh, even, even, even dating back from like Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, I found out, and being being in Texas, it's a Texas thing. Bonnie and Clyde, right? Uh, my brother in law, who was a high school friend, and he he liked me so much, he married into the family. So, uh, we were talking one day because I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go over Bonnie and Clyde." And he's like, "Yeah, my grandmother thought uh, Bonnie was a bitch." I'm like, "Wait a minute, what? I mean, like literally?" He's like, "Yeah, they went to high school." Oh really? Yes, his his grandmother went to high school with uh with Bonnie and Clyde, and she was like Clyde was just the 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 quietest person and the sweet the sweet shy boy. Exactly, and but Bonnie was a bitch. I'm like that place. And, and then I ended up talking with uh another uh a coworker about. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have uh this one uh, uh, person on, we're going to talk about relationships with uh, killers and everything. And she was, he was like, yeah, Bonnie was a bitch. I'm like, geez, really? You too? It's like, yeah, my, 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 my grandmother knew, knew a couple of people that hung out with them. And she was just, I was like, huh? Huh? I wonder what, what a Friday night looked like for Bonnie. Before Claude got in the picture, you know? Yes. That, well, I mean, you got, you got the, like depression era and everything like that. Uh, there really wasn't that much to do around there. It was probably a lot of drinking. And if you, what do you think, think was her drink of choice? Drink of choice back then. Uh, I mean, I actually did a, uh, uh, talk with a person the, the the difference between alcohol prices nowadays and back then you could literally get a like uh, a gallon of whiskey for like probably about 10 cents and milk is more expensive that yeah. that that's the reason why we had that whole uh uh ban on alcohol for a while because uh, prohibition prohibition there we go <laughs> I, i'm still waking up <laughs> no i got you no i mean and i think there was also probably a lot more of um you know making it yourself yeah i mean it's yeah. probably a bit more accessible in that kind of sense as well yeah because uh, i mean 
we we made mead for a while and beer and it was because we were young and we had a lot a lot of time on our hands like why don't we make our own alcohol I'm like let's just make our own alcohol and yeah so we did too or we would so i'm from tennessee originally so um there's no Ten- there's no there's no thing in tennessee that has like moonshine or anything like that <laughs> so i was gonna say <laughs> It was a little bit of that white lightning that uh, everybody was passing around. Yeah. 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 So speaking of Bonnie and Clyde, though, there's actually, um, let me pull it up so that I'm saying all the right words here, but there's a syndrome um, associated with people. Generally, it tends to be women who are seeking out these men who have committed the crimes, but it could go either way. Yeah, uh, I think mainly that's just because of numbers, though, right? Because we generally have more men tend to be the serial killers than yeah. women. So then, you know, that would make sense. That and the uh, the the news uh, more or less go towards uh, men being the killers because mm-hmm. uh, there's there's lots of women. that. Uh, oh, there are plenty of women who have. Yeah. I just mean, like in terms of being prolific or these crazy cases, I do think the numbers run more that it tends to be more a more male dominated sport if you will well that's because most of the male have it, it, men tend to be more brutal mm. on the hunters yes exactly and, and that that was another uh emphasis i was going to take over is uh because the men are killing and everything they they gear towards that as you know a more of a better protector i guess hmm Willing yeah. to oh, like the women view them that way. Yes, exactly. So that's one thought behind it. So it's actually called um hybristophilia. So it's also known as the Bonnie and Clyde syndrome or pair of or um phenomenon. Hmm. And it's it says here that psychologists only have theories about why some people are like this. Some believe uh that his hybristophiliacs are submissive victims while others believe they are narcissist enablers who are attracted to power. And that almost feels, there's one, um, would, as we get into the show a little bit more, there was one lady who was writing letters to uh, John Wayne Gacy. And this uh, almost, she almost felt sorry for him. And it wasn't in a weird sexual way, the way a lot of these other women were writing men. She like felt like a, a connection with him. She felt kind of bad for him. But based on her past, she would have been a victim of some things that, you know, retrained her brain to look at him that way. Yeah. Versus some of these others. One lady I was listening to wrote wrote a book on it about men who women who fall in love with men who have done these things. And she even said it was pretty bizarre or almost even eerie to hear her say it this way. And in this the tone of voice that she kind of inflected when she was saying it. But she said that. When she was a little girl, even when people would warn you of the boogeyman and, and you'd hear these kinds of things and most kids would be afraid to go to sleep and what that would mean for them, she would fantasize about it. And she had this very specific fantasy of a, a man, the boogeyman, riding up on a black stallion with a cape and she would hop on and put her arms around his waist and they'd fly off. And that was the boogeyman. So and she's one that has dated multiple or dated, whatever that means in prison, but has been attracted to um, multiple uh, violent criminals or actually serial killers. Uh, and But even as a child, she was saying things like that were uh, pleasing to her, like those thoughts. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I literally came more of a, a clarity when I started doing uh, the serial killer podcast. And what... Uh, another one that shows the the craziness of uh, people. There was a a case I did. I, I can't remember their name. It was like two years ago, and this woman ended up viewing the ki- her, her mother's killer as a father figure. Mm. She was adopted and everything, and her mother was a prostitute, and he killed prostitutes, uh, dismembered them, lit them up flames to get rid of the evidence. Uh, it was done in New York. I, I just don't know names. Uh, but you, there's photos, and you just Google uh, daughter uh, hangs out with serial killer, and she pops up. 
and they hang out, they laugh, they take, you can see photos of them together uh, in the prison. I'm like, he killed your mother and you you want to like hang out and be best friends. And, and, and she even says in interviews that the reason why she did it is because of the basic fact she, she wants closure for other people. She's hoping that she can get the other murder, uh, murder victims closure. And I'm like, nah, you're just, you're just telling yourself that. Yeah. That's an interesting, uh, reasoning that she has with herself there um i think that it's probably been brought to her attention so much how irregular this behavior is <laughs> that she feels like she has to defend it because it is not the norm you know and and i always say like when we do our show that you know everybody reacts to things differently and everybody processes you know their emotions and traumas a different kind of way so what might seem odd for one person is what this other person feels normal to do that's bizarre behavior obviously but without, without knowing the details of the case you're talking about and it i feel like i've heard of this but without knowing the details i would be curious to know what she experienced in the home like before her mother was killed before he went to prison um, uh, she what so she, young, she was so young, uh, there was, I think she was like three years old and I didn't, I know by that time you can still have like trauma from them, but she had a perfect, and, uh, they even said that she had a perfect, uh, adoption, the family. I mean, after she came into age, the family told her you're adopted. Your mother was killed by a serial killer. We took you in. We love you. We care about you. We'll give you anything and everything you possibly. And she, she looks. If you look at her, like you're like, oh, she's a stand up citizen, you know. Right. But you can't really really judge on a uh, character of just seeing a person once you get to talk to them. Then they sure then it comes out. You know, it's interesting. I I don't know. She could have had. She could have some of this. There could be some weird. You know trauma bond situation with him that in her subconscious you know who knows if when it happened and her mom being ripped away like that i mean i don't know that is very young and that's super uh <laughs> it, bizarre. I, it, it really is bizarre man but you know i look at certain things that i've been through in my life and i was like yeah it'd be seem kind of crazy if you you actually uh look at it in a different person's eye yeah like uh it like I, I broke up with this one well she broke up with me i was about to break up with her i was so upset then i got to a friend's my house like i'm we're drinking tonight we're gonna go heavy and everything like that I was like what happened she broke up with me dude seriously last week we were talking about breaking up with her oh yeah well we won't go that hard then i mean it's just you yeah. sometimes you gotta have somebody to step back and go Dude, this is fucking nuts. You need to yeah. Stop. Okay. Yeah. yeah makes sense. It would be. Yeah. I don't know. It makes me want to look into that more because the things I want to hear now are less from her, but it's about the people around her, you know, like her adoptive parents. What would they have to say? Or what do they have to say about this? Or what do they have to say about her behavior at home or verbiage that she's used at home when she references him? You know, I don't know. That would be interesting to know. No, you're absolutely right. Because. If you if you look at uh like one person's you can have like two siblings. One sibling finally looks back, he's like, you know what? Our childhood was actually pretty good. I, I know this everyone, exactly. Every once in a while, you know, my dad, you know, had to take a belt to me. No big deal. From the south. It happens. Then you go to another another family member, it's like, it was hell. I have scars. Of scars, of scars. Even the tissue, in the even the star scar tissue is still bleeding from what they did to me when I was younger. I'm like, and yeah, you, and, and you just don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, I definitely. I mean, um, I'm I'm one of three, you know, siblings, and I think the three of us all have varying, you know, uh, would have a different perspective on childhood. Uh, I'm I'm pretty oh, in the middle, yeah. but between say what is a telephone game yeah it is and i and i'm the um i'm the youngest of three and they're they're a good bit you know a few years older than me and uh it's interesting because the the two of them have the most polar opposite perspectives so the oldest in the middle child have 
very differing perspectives on what it looked like. And they were only a few years apart. I come along quite a ways later and I'm much more uh, even keel between the two of them and kind of how, how I look at things. And I mean, nothing crazy happened at home or anything like that, that would, you know, cause us to feel one way or another necessarily, but they definitely have very different. And I've got a couple of kids and I've thought about that too. Like how, or how are they going to perceive their time right now, you know, when they're adults, like, and how is it going to be different from the other one? Yeah. I mean, even, even with my kid now, it's like, you'd think everything's going well and everybody's happy. And then it just throws you a loop. The, yeah. the pretty hits and you're like, what, what I woke <laughs> up and she was giving me flowers because she loves me. And now she burned the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And hasn't talked in four days or something. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Well, who who are you wanting to talk about tonight? Uh, well, I there's a couple of them. Uh, it's like a I did one case called Cedric Marks, and I it, it was one of those things. Is like I gave you a list, and then I thought about other things. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw for a loop. This is gonna suck. No, you're good. I just I may not may or may not be. I kind of looked at a couple of these. Um. Myself, I just came off of my show on Tuesday. I've not had a, a super ton of time to be diving into this stuff, but I looked into a few myself because I remembered about Ted Bundy having yeah. gotten married during his trial. Some of the bigger ones I kind of remembered, but then, you know, it's a, this is a great topic thinking about the spouses of the serial killers and were there red flags that they missed um, or were there red flags that they dismissed? You know, um, I think that that's the delineation there and so it was kind of interesting going back and reading about a couple so I kind of did just to you know get myself current on it because I I couldn't remember specifically you know about their their yeah. love lives I was like uh the Iceman the Iceman you the, you go from the movie with uh March uh Shapler I think that's how you pronounce it but anyways in, in his home life they didn't get fully on his home life and you read about it he was abusive to his mm. wife and his wife got the, like the last word because he had a heart attack and he's like oh no his wife literally says like no recess uh recess uh, resuscitation so don't bring him back and he put it in it was like please resuscitate me he's like put him down like a dog if you have to and she, she she got she got her her karma back she was like kill him yeah but good for her. Uh, well, the, uh, BC was telling me about a case that before we, uh, he was supposed to be on, we were supposed to have a good discuss discussion about all this with him too. But what he ended up uh, sending me was an article from uh, y'all guys' neck of the woods from North Carolina where they killed the person, chopped up the body. Uh, the girlfriend and the boyfriend did this. And then came all the way to Texas to bury the body and get rid of the evidence. Hmm. I'm trying to remember if he and I have talked about that one or not. I'm not sure. I'm not super sure about that one. Well, I got the. Oh, you have the article there? Yeah, he, he sent it to me yesterday. Uh, to, 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 uh, discovery of, uh, feature of uh, Riley murder. Oh, deadly woman. Uh, Grant Ruffin Hayes and his wife, Amanda Perry Hayes. Amanda Hayes sounds familiar to me. Yeah. Uh, it happened like uh, July 2011. Hmm. So they, so did they commit the crime together? Yeah, they committed the crime together. They uh, apparently put the uh, body in a U-Haul truck and drove to Texas to dump it in the creek. They brought it to you. Yeah, I oh, do. Totally off topic, but still kind of on topic. I don't know what it is in the water for nurses in Texas, but a lot of the serial killers that go over that are nurses come from Texas. Mm. I was like, I don't, I don't want to go to the hospital anymore. I'm good. Mm. Coughing up blood. No, I'm good. No, all good. 
I could, well, I could probably live. I'm a nurse, but I'm not from Texas. Does that matter? It actually matters. I'd actually listen to you. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so another one, um, and if you want to talk more about that story, absolutely. No, 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 that's fine. Go ahead. This is your this is your show. Um, so Dennis Rader, right? The BTK killer. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to mention Yeah. So if uh if you're not familiar listening i mean he's one of the more prolific the ones the one talked about he actually coined his own nickname which a lot do they think it's fun fun and games spine torture kill is what that acronym stands for he was a former boy scout leader he was active in the church he was a pretty upstanding member of the community and if y'all listen to a lot of these and like i'm sure you talk about on your show with the serial killers it's interesting because I mean, there are a lot of variations, but I think the two biggest channels would be either the awkward one that's kind of maybe still at home with mom and never really can hold a job and can't get along with other people. But then there are the ones like this who are like bright and shining examples in the community and you would just never think anything. The whole, and, uh, he he was my best friend. I don't, I can't see how he did that. Yeah, there's no way he could have done anything like that. He was, he he won all the awards in high school. Um so he actually, he said about himself that uh, in this, I thought it's always been uh, kind of chilling, but we talk about how they can like almost compartmentalize or come home to a wife and kids after they've just done this, you know, committed this heinous act. Off. Yeah, just It shut, shut off, right? So he, the way he articulated how he viewed himself was that it was like a cube theory and that at any time he could turn around and whatever side of the cube he needed to face outward is what would face outward so if it's church man he's flipping that around and that's what's facing outward uh, if it's husband bam uh and so he's very articulate and very um just intentional with how he could put on whatever face he needed to do at the moment which is just so bizarre um she did his wife walked he was married for a long time and there had <clears throat> excuse me there had not been you know we say no red flags nothing that we know of nothing that mom or anybody later has come back to say you know well this this and this happened but you know I, I dismissed it in fact there wasn't much until she did walk on him, in on him um performing auto erotic as asphyxiation upon himself um and this mortified her I mean this is long before the time when these kinds of things were more heard about and you know you hear these terms a lot more i think that and we had the internet yeah there's no internet yeah plain and simple and and these are just not terms that we would throw around right like you wouldn't uh, plenty of housewives or you know men, plenty of people wouldn't have ever thought or heard of that you know whatever yeah um so she walked in on it they say that she was completely mortified uh he murdered i think it was 10 people in a, like over three decades so he kind of spread out some stuff but uh, let's see here. So they were married for 34 years. Um, when police charged him, they sat her down and told her what he was, you know, that he was actually the one committing these crimes. And just she hasn't said anything really, but the daughter said that you could just, you know, hear her mother break. She just sobbed and sobbed uncontrollably. She was actually granted an emergency divorce and, you know, wanted no part of it. Uh, so I truly do think that there are times when, I mean, these women were just putting their head down and raising the kids and doing the thing. And these men were kind of coming and going and not a lot of questions were asked. And maybe he had red flags or maybe he did a really, really good job of seeming completely normal, you know? Well, it uh, the most recent one that was something like that was uh, uh, Aaron Hernandez. Oh, goodness. I, and I revisited that because we were doing Super Bowl murderers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he even called his wife. It's like, hey, can you get rid of the gun that's in the closet? It's just a box. You know, just take. And he had ring phones all along. Uh, he had cameras all around his house. So the evidence and the, the police took the uh, evidence finally. And was like, what are you throwing away here? But they were helping the murderer try to get rid of some of the evidence so they can actually yeah. get away with it. And that, I mean, I can understand the complicity of it at times because it's what, what what was the one that you said the the psychosis? Oh, oh, the the proper name. Yeah. Um, 
the proper name starts with an H, uh, hybristophilia. Oh, okay, hybristophilia. Because I keep on thinking it's kind of a, like a Stockholm syndrome. So it it almost so that's what I was actually going to touch on when you were mentioning the the girl or now woman who hangs out with the man in prison that murdered her mother. Yeah. Um. Although she didn't. <laughs> That's what I was trying to touch on. She could have formed some sort of a trauma bond with him if she were present when her mom died, or even yeah, maybe just the, the the knowledge of over the years hearing about it could have maybe yeah. somehow mentally done that to her. Uh, usually, it it would be over a little bit of time or like one big incident that, if that's the case, she might be one of the younger, most you know, youngest recorded uh, victims of Stockholm, if if that's what you could call that, right? Yeah. Usually you're a bit older in that sense, but yeah, I think that there is something uh, on the hybristophilia that you're right. I think that there's some associated factor there, like if they're, but it's also like they're seeking it out. You know, I think that with Stockholm, it's like when it happened, it caused that trauma, which causes that strange need or desire or, you know, fulfillment or of um, needing to show them affection, needing to provide that affection and needing to receive theirs. This though uh in the cases that we talk about where the women were complicit and not in the crimes I, I think it's it's a different thing when they commit the crimes with them but it's a it's a different thing when they know that these men have committed the crimes and this is what they're seeking is exactly. someone who has done this yeah i was like so, uh, it was it, it, the the what i'm coming back to is is the realm of thinking it's like uh one person could uh come off of like la uh, y'all's Tuesday's show, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people will come off of that and saying, uh, we'll go with the uh, the clean part. Some people are like, oh, you're, you're saying it's dirty. And they go home and they, they look around. They can see their place is dirty, but they won't do anything about it. But a person that actually has a little bit of emotion in the stock and stuff, they hear dirty. I, I literally, when I was I was working as I was listening to the podcast, and I wanted to go home and just clean the apartment. Oh, up. do you mean specifically last this past Tuesdays? Yes. Oh, I I, I I'll, I'll I'll give you this. I did Re Reaper Crew uh, last weekend, and I won't give you the details on the horror, just horror of what they did. And in comparison of talking about that, that is, I mean, I was, I was, I was ready to, you could send me out anywhere and I would like devastate. And he's like, yeah. this, this is the person that did it. I would like, oh, too easy. We're, <laughs> this is going to be, we're going to have a good time with this one. Yeah. Agreed. And oh. I mean, you know, we say it a lot on the show, like, why is this person allowed another breath? And, and I, and I often actually feel that way, but when it comes to something like this, just, no time wasted, you know, and I try not to be extreme or blanket statement about things. But there's just no, it, he was called an act that happened. There's not a doubt. There's not a shadow of a doubt that he was innocent in any kind of way. Actually, he completely admitted to everything that he had done. He tried to mm -hmm. rationalize it. Uh, guys, it was, it's about this guy, Kermit Gosnell, who was uh, acting under the guise of being an abortionist, but he was murdering a live born babies and probably hundreds of them. He's in prison for this. It's a terrible story. But yeah, the the pictures, usually speaking, you know, I, I'm not in law enforcement. I am a nurse. I've seen over the years, you know, a decent amount of enough stuff in the hospital. Um, but in doing the show and some other things prior, I've, you know, viewed a lot of photos anyway of a lot of the crime scenes that, you know, some kind of, you kind of squint one eye. You don't want to see it fully, but you want to see it like a, a kid in front of a scary movie almost. Yeah. Um. And but I can usually digest it. I will tell you, this is probably the first time that I had a really tough time digesting what I was seeing, and it was from from that case. Uh, yeah, I I had to the, for the Reaper crew. I had to like, it took me like five tries just to, and I had to find. I was like, I can't do this article. I'm gonna have to mm -hmm. do this article. I'm gonna have to come up with some other stuff, and I had to go redo everything. And I'm like, I'll have okay. to look into that. What was the what was the case? Uh, the Reaper crew were uh serial killers in chicago and they mutilated prostitutes and uh i don't think i know them oh a friend of mine up at work told me because he's into serial killers and he heard about mm -hmm. my podcast and he's like oh you gotta check these guys out i'm like you're really excited about this 
And then I read Reddit. It's like, you should not be excited about that. Uh, it was, I, oh, mm, mm. It, 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 I, I don't want you to send in the article. You find it yourself. You're good at that. But I, uh-uh. You know, I say I, that oh, all I, the I, time I, on the show. I, I always I, say I, I'm not. And I was like, he was, he was like, no, yeah. don't ever say that again. Yeah. I, uh, I often will say on the show, like, guys, I'll show you some pictures or I'll tell most of it. I'm not going to tell everything, you know, you can look it up if you want to, because sometimes it, you know, not often, but sometimes it is quite that horrendous that it's like, no, nope, you can, you can look it up yourself. You are privy to find that information, but, uh, I, <laughs> that there's only so much I can say out loud. I can read about it or maybe tell someone in a small setting, but I cannot broadcast it. You know, I don't know. Ooh, yeah. We- uh, another another one, and this is this is a weird one. It's not it's not like a couple couple, but the toy box uh, killer, Oof. David Parker Ray. Yeah. Uh. Ugh. He he ended up his daughter was helping him out with that stuff, yeah. and that and that was that was strange. And mm. you can look at the episode that I did about him. I I was just. Uh, like I said, there... that case, that case in and of itself, I can't, I mean, even just the, the photos without showing even any of the victims, anything just of the scene, like just of the inside of that the, box. The, oh, I, I don't, I zoomed in on something. I'm still trying to question what the hell. Oh, I did too. I zoomed in on the whole truck. Um, I, I was like, what, what are these wires for on this? I was like, no, no, we're just gonna go ahead and put that in a box. Yeah, lock that box up. It was it terrible. On the shelf and just, just forget about it. It's gonna collect dust. There were some things that we, yeah, we just it's better not knowing. Yeah. Uh, we have so here's an example. So, um, Herb Baumeister, ba- Baumeister maybe from uh, ninety one to ninety six, he murdered eleven. Men, uh, he and his wife and his kids lived on 18 acres of property. Um, If I'm not mistaken, I don't know a whole lot about this case, but I think that this could have been maybe his father's property that they moved on to once his father was deceased. I'm not not entirely certain. I think his dad might have been a doctor. That's where the rest of this comes in. She found a skull in the backyard, or her 13-year-old son did when he was digging in the garden. Uh, Alerted mom. She brings it to husband. He said that it was his father's, like, not, like, you know. Oh, not, yes. Yeah. Remember this guy. Okay. And and he and she kind of tosses it back in the yard like it was used as medical study, like for a medical class. Yeah. Um, And she tosses it back in the yard, and she didn't really think twice about it, which, I mean, I guess if she's not had reason to, and if father-in-law had been a doctor, I guess that, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I would love it in my backyard like that with my family. But, I mean, if that's what I thought it was being used for, then, you know, I don't know. I could see her believing him. Um, so that's the case where she straight up found evidence <laughs> later, the cops came, they had a tip, some anonymous tip and were able to come and find, uh, you yeah, know, I think they found 11 bodies, uh, yeah. uh, in the yard there. But so that's, a, that's a situation where the wife actually found one of the dead bodies, a skull yeah. anyway, but there was a great excuse. I don't, I, I'm, 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 I'm one of those people though, that, that you, you tell me something I'm like, yeah, I don't believe you. I know, but then then think, okay, but it's your that was her husband of however many years. They got these kids. They've recently moved onto this property. They're excited. It actually sounds like the start of every horror movie that ever begins or haunted house movie. Um it really does. Most, <laughs> does of, most of these are like totally yeah. horror movie quality. Like you can just see them popping out of like the old Woody and grabbing the luggage off the top and they're whistling as they walk into the new place, you know, but there's actually skulls in the backyard. Because when she and the kids would go out of town or go off shopping for the day, he would go find his next victim. Um, Didn't he go like in different towns? Oh, here it was. Here it is. This was it. Ding, 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 da, ding, ding, dong. Um, she believed what he said. She put it back. Uh, later, when the search warrant was placed, the police had to explain um, homosexual homicide to her. Like, she didn't quite understand because everyone that he killed was a man. I think from, like, 20 to 40 years old, all had same physical characteristics, all the same stuff you hear. Um, but he was um, homosexual, and she didn't know this. However, I think they were married for, like, 24. Four years. They were married for a couple over a couple of decades. And they only had sex like three times. Six. 
six. Yeah, they only had sex. six yeah, okay. times. Hey, I, I'm, 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 I'm get, I'm. Yes. This one's coming back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they only had sex six times, and she, um, but did not. She said she never believed him to be homosexual. She just thought that he just wasn't very sexually driven. Because I did, I did something. I did another case similar, but it was a Russian guy, and he could. Ooh. He couldn't get like an erection or something like that. And he just the only time frame that he like got off was because he murdered somebody. Yeah. But, and it was it would sometimes be while he was stabbing, like during the actual. Yes, exactly. Yeah. In fact, he I don't know how much can I say on your show? Oh, I don't care. I'm, um, I'm so low. I'm so low. They don't even know I exist. <laughs> so. Well, just that. Um, I try my, if you've seen my show, you know that I try to keep it a little clean, but my sweet counterpart over there doesn't always, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you need to stop talking about that wonderful man <laughs> as your, your co-host. Well, I, I will, I will spend the money to go to North Carolina and just give you a nice wrapping on the, on the hand. Come because to the, come to the meet and greet. That's what you should do. God. It, uh, I I got so much. I got a. I'm so busy in April because we're gonna go. Uh, my brother-in-law like messaged me like a couple of weeks ago. It's like, hey, dude, biggest gun show uh, in the world. I'm like, really? Okay, we'll go to that. Then I gotta go to Attack, and I gotta meet some people from uh, BRCC, uh, and uh, do some stuff with them. Well. It, I was, I've, I've already spent my money ahead of time. Oh, it's I hear you. Thing. Well, so the guy, the um, Russian, there's another Russian guy that we'll talk about his wife, but this Russian guy that you were just talking about that could not um, achieve or maintain a re an erection with his wife, which he then later said, like, I find her very attractive, but that wasn't, what was, you know, we know that this doesn't come down to looks. This is definitely psychological and he could not make it happen. So she was actually, um, she bore a child of his, at least one, I think yeah, just because one. Like they did the, 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 the scoop thing. Yeah. Literally it wasn't even like turkey based or it was just like manually just with his hands that he inseminated her. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and then that's exactly how he eventually, uh, he's the one Did he start with. No, that's a different one. Anyway, yeah, it's a, so that's another one. So we had old Herb, whose wife found the skull, found the part of the body, but believed his story. I don't know. And I think I could, I could believe that that once, but then we couple it with the fact that he only, they only had sex six times in over two decades. I just, I, I'm, that one, that was, that would sound believable. Because then, then he come, then he came out with, "Oh, I'm gay." I was like, "Okay, that makes sense now." But yeah, still, I mean, why would anybody be? A lot of the relationship is physical. I mean, yeah, I don't. I'm not sure why that wasn't a red flag, but you know what? I don't know. In doing some of the reading, some of these, and not that the times should change it. Not that the fact that it was late eighties, early nineties means that people are having less sex. Obviously that's not the case, but I do think that um, some people grew up with more of a stigma on it. So even in their married yeah. lives, they were affected by it. I think that there are a lot of reasons why some people would just be okay with that. I don't, you know, I, I don't know why I don't, it doesn't make for a healthy relationship at all. We know that, but there are things that go on in, in her head. She, I mean, she didn't even seem to, all she said to it, she never said like, I always thought that was weird or I always tried to talk to him about it or I always wanted him to do these things with me. Instead, she just said, oh, I, I didn't know that that meant that he was homosexual. She also didn't seem to have a problem with it though. You know, I, so I don't know. Well, you know, another, another case uh, I did was uh, Erica and Benjamin uh, Shift. And I don't know. Yeah, you would have to you would have to listen to a Clear Hot podcast because Andy Andy Stumps talks about this uh, this couple all the time because he was a he wasn't I don't I don't think he was a Navy Seal uh -huh. because he he ended up uh, getting processed out. Well, what what they ended up doing is they ended up murdering a couple. She ended up stabbing them for a purse, 
And the whole reason why they caught this couple, because they they threw the body away. They knew the dumpster was going to go uh, out to the uh, landfill at such and such time. They timed it just right. Got uh, got the body. They didn't. They had to go to the landfill to find the bodies, which it's almost damn near impossible. Right. And then the only reason why they caught uh, got uh, caught, and this is going for y'all's podcast, is they broke into Hooters to steal a shirt. They that that's literally what happened. They broke into a Hooters to steal a shirt. I mean, those are great shirts. I, yeah, I I don't even like Hooters. I'm joking. It's all gross. Food is horrible. It's terrible. It, 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 I, every time someone's like, "Oh, we got to go to Hooters," it's like, "Do you you know I'm a gourmet chef, right?" My I, reaction to that would just be always, "Are they still in business? You know, what I mean? like are we still doing that?" Yeah. We still eating there? We still. I mean, okay. the chicken's dry. I, I, it, it. There's so many complications to that. But yeah, that's 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 the whole reason. And they they kept the bloody knife of the couples. Uh, they found the D, the DNA to be a match, and mm -hmm. they're serving time. And it was another instance. Idiots. Yeah, it was another instance where, uh, from when I was reading the cops were saying it's like yeah the woman initiated all this stuff yeah and that's oh look women can be crazy too i mean handbags a handbag if it's really nice they'll i mean right they'll chop off your arm for one a good one i'm trying to think of what i do that for i don't care that much about purses mm. i know what i would do it for 1977 what? four door uh chevy impala that's not bad black tan interior i mean i'll give you the whole thing i'm a supernatural fan and okay. I love that car oh. okay four times i've seen that car in real life yeah and it was just like did you get your picture with it yes i was in the driver's seat and i was like get out no <laughs> but it's not your car <laughs> Uh, oh, here's, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh, it's, it's your show. Um, well, there's one where this guy, uh, in the like mid, like 2000s, the mid, the two, how do you 2007 to 2010, the, within the first decade, how do you even reference the 2000s? Um, uh, this mean, beginning of the thousands, That's... the beginning of the second thousands. Uh, Russell Williams broke into at least 82 homes to steal underwear that belonged to women and young girls. This was in Canada. Now, we all know if you listen to any kind of crime stuff that stealing underwear is not going to it's not going to end there, right? Where it's going to have to escalate. He's going to have to keep on, which he did. Uh he started taking photos of himself. Um <laughs> it's not funny. Um he would get home, take photos of himself posing in the underwear, but then it does escalate into where he's finally sexually assaulting victims in their home. Eventually, he did murder uh, two women before getting caught by asphyxiation. So you can kind of see pretty textbook how that went. Uh, he was a gifted pilot. Uh, all these things. He had been married um, for a while, 23-year career. He finally gave a full confession it took a while to get it from him. He was sentenced from for with excuse me, sentenced to two life sentences. So anyway, come to find out there's a lot of evidence he had on his home computer. He put his photos on there that he had taken wearing the underwear. Uh he told his wife he even had some crime scene photos in a like all these complex kind of subfolders in his files on his computer. Um and he also he told his wife that when he was out walking late at night, it was ease to ease the pain of his sore back. Um, but that's when he was going off doing these things. But anyway, about four years after he was arrested, so 2014, his wife was sued by one of the sexual assault victims um, to the tune of, I don't know, yeah, $7 million, um, saying she claimed that the wife knew her husband was a sexual deviant. And that she, as his wife, could have done something to prevent these crimes. Um, her lawyers were opposed to this. State there's no evidence whatsoever that that she would have known this. However, they did settle in private. 
Um, and as is usually the case, the details of the settlement were not made public. So I don't know if they were settled in private because the woman is just so horrified that her husband did this. It's been four years since his arrest. She wants everything just to be, just go away. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. Or is there a reason she settled privately? I don't know. Well, it's privately cases when they're actually done, it's, it's kind of weird. A lot of people like think the worst most of the time on the uh, first doc. It's like just. Uh, recently I, I know someone that just settled and it wasn't because, you know, oh, I don't want to get this truth out, even though the truth finally came out because it's public knowledge once you actually follow the stuff. Uh, it was basically the fact was like, oh yeah, I forgot to pay that guy. I mean, literally it was just, I forgot yeah. to pay that guy. Here's the money. I am sorry. And the, the guy that brought up the lawsuit was the only reason why he brought up the lawsuit is because, hey, I ke you keep on dodging my calls. I don't know why you're doing that. And it was just he was busy running a – Yeah. But another one that when I was doing uh, doing it uh, on the episode was uh, Catherine Knight. And that was my very first Failure to Stop episode. Was it really? Yeah. She is that was my my first and favorite case in that sense. Yes. Man, what a case. Yeah, because the guy came back over and over, over. and over and over. <laughs> he wasn't the first one to come back. In fact, there was only one that left and stayed gone that you didn't hear about again. But her first the first guy, if I'm not mistaken, now I can't remember. There was like a David and a Daniel and a, uh, the, the first guy came back. The one that she ultimately killed, though, and I mean, he had, Don't he, had forget that one. he had finally put a restraining order on her, was trying to stay out late to avoid her, finally goes home, you know, and, and she's in the home. But um, but before that, if you're not familiar with the case, I mean, one time he hadn't he had not had. Oh, on their wedding night, on their wedding night, he had, I think he had sex with her three times and it wasn't five times or whatever she said in her head that it needed to be. And he, next thing you know, she's on top of him with a knife. I mean, well, they were, they were stacked on top of the bed because she, because she was a knives. butcher. Yeah. She was a, but well, she was in a slaughterhouse. Well, she was in the slaughterhouse. She was in the abattoir or whatever they call it. She was a deboner. I know that much because that term, we couldn't say it enough that night we had the show. But she was a deboner. That was her job. And her coworkers talked about her, um, you know, deriving enjoyment from observing the slaughter of the different animals. And as she moved up in the ranks, I guess you would say, of the abattoir, she would bring her tools. When I think it was kind of like a specialty, almost like you'd pass the certification or training or whatever to be able to then be granted these tools, like your own tools while you work there. Yeah. Yes. And you're right. She brought them home and mounted them over the bed as decor. <laughs> but, but okay, so we're not talking about the serial killer. We're talking about the people who crave that he didn't know she was a kill serial killer but good lord he was craving whatever kind of negative attention uh she was bringing because she beat him in the head with a frying pan yeah i mean well we all we all know that you know the best sex is crazy sex but you know there's, i mean there's a line that, that was the argument for about her yeah so I, mean, were saying. I mean she I, I looked pictures of her she was fucked ugly she was just she was tall and um red real real frizzy hair uh she wasn't her face is like because i'm looking at pictures right now because i was like yeah, it it she she i i, I want to say it might have been just the camera angle but she just looks off and i would not i would like man she, yeah she was getting in fights in school and stuff though you know even as a kid yeah she was like punching girls on the playground wasn't didn't she have like some kind of accident though because it, it was another, it was another thing that a lot of the people that get like uh, Roseanne Barr and Sam Kennison, when they were younger, they got hit in the head with something. Well, head trauma can, good. head trauma is not part of the um, what is it, the McDonald um triad or whatever, like the three, the bedwetting and fire setting, yeah, um, and animal torture. It's it's not one of those, but head trauma, especially frontal lobe trauma 
early on. Because I, I, sent, I sent you that uh, a video. Oh, yeah. That, Which one did uh, you send? You sent me one a while ago, right? Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. it, it, and it goes off as like something happening with the frontal lobe is usually the cause of. Oh, no, that's wrong. Thing. Well, yes, because your frontal lobe determines personality, you know. So if you um, are if you know someone or in the medical field, you've ever taken care of someone who has frontal lobe injury, the way someone is before a significant frontal lobe injury and after is going to be very, very different or potentially can be very different. Someone who never said um, a, a bad word in their life might be because I'm like a sailor, someone who used to be. Um, you know, um, vivacious and bubbly and, and, you know, full of laughter can be just very stoic and quiet and introverted, or it's almost more, it's almost more disturbing when it's the other way around, when it's someone who's very serious before, and now they just like inappropriately laugh at everything. It's so it, it absolutely can change, um, personality and behavior and it can go toward. Now, I would not say that that, that alone would be the one thing that all of a sudden now you're, you know, you're so much more predisposed to be a serial killer. But I would say if you already have some other things going on, maybe some traumas, uh, maybe already starting to exhibit some of these other symptoms we were just talking about, and then you throw in a nice whopping head injury early on, it doesn't help anything at all. Uh, I can't remember if she, now you're piquing my interest because I can't remember if she did or did not have something like that happen. Yeah. Mm. We we talked about Keith Jess uh Jefferson Jesperson uh at one point the happy face killer. Uh big guy like six six, six seven. Um yeah, I, was, I was starting up research on him then I got yeah, look, awesome look into that. It's an interesting one. Um but he he was the very typical like uh bad relationship with mother, bad relationship with women, hated women kind of thing, you know, the he, impotence and all this all that stuff. The psycho the psycho phenomenon. Yeah. So when he was in terrible, terrible, terrible uh, father did horrible things. So it, all the things it's very that his is also very textbook, but he never could climb the rope in gym class. And I don't think they even do this anymore. But, you know, a while back, you would have the rope that went from the floor to the ceiling in the very tall gym class yeah. in the gymnasium. And when he was, I believe, 17, I think it was a junior or senior in high school. And he did. And he got to the top. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he rang the bell slipped and came straight down from the top of that rope and uh smashed that gymnasium floor and knocked that noggin pretty well so that alone is not going to cause him to rape and murder women that combined with the fact that his dad beat him and his dad tortured animals got, in front he of probably, him he probably got the brain trauma just for his dad's beating him so you probably yeah. not even that rope stuff and also from watching his dad you know i don't know um hang their kittens on the clothesline and kill them. That that probably okay. didn't help. It might be a small factor. Small factor. So anyway, yeah, there's there's a lot of things. But in terms of outside of the the serial killers themselves or these like Catherine wasn't a serial killer. She just uh <laughs> she just skinned old boy that one time. But um yeah he kept coming back and that's a great point. Uh, uh well, it's like that's, uh, uh that's just more like an abuse um like a i don't know like he couldn't leave his abuser kind of thing you know yeah i call it i, I every time i hear that i hear that i mean i might be totally wrong and i keep on thinking stockholm syndrome but most stockholm syndromes the the person isn't like that mean well right and they they're grooming you out of a necessity to to it's two things. A lot of times they groom you out of a necessity to have you eventually comply. Like when you think of Elizabeth Smart or any of these stories where these girls were with these people for years at a time, uh, they want you to eventually be able to comply. That's why a lot of them wind up getting caught because over the years the girls do comply and then they start giving them more and more and more freedom, meaning like going outside to wash the car. That was an actual instance, you know, and yeah. then something might snap and the girl realizes like, whoa, I can actually go and then flees to a neighbor's or down the street. And then it's been 14 years and now this dude's caught. It also cut not only out of compliance where the, um, the, the perpetrator wants the hostage to be um, compliant. It also happens the, like kind of conversely to where the person who's been taken hostage or who has been kidnapped, um, 
consciously or otherwise, I think quite often subconsciously, something switches in their brain. And because now your two choices are just get on board with the fact that this is what we're doing and we'll figure it out, or you were in mental torment consistently. So well, it, it's like the uh, the cult scenarios. I mean, you look at David Caress and John Jones. I mean, he did like uh, John Jones literally is like, hey, I'm going to. Uh, it's my show. I don't fucking care. Uh, I'm going to fuck the gay out of you. Oh, yeah, he did. He, that's what he said. And that it, this is this is what's going to happen. We're going to I'm going to fuck the gay. And the, what gets me is the survivors of that coming back and saying it's like, yeah, but you had to be there to understand yeah. that. I'm like, yeah. So that's something Um, actually. Yes. And you're right. And it's something I think that uh, BC and I have actually talked about. I would like to do a show one day just simply on cults, but. But to that point, there was one I was discussing with him and I might, you know, when I was saying this case that I did on Tuesday was the worst ever. It, it is. I mean, it's, it's the worst ever. There's there's not much worse than that. But there's this cult. I'll look it up again. Trust me, there's worse. <laughs> I, it, it's it, well, it, it's it, like there's I'm always worse, but it's different. Right. It, uh, yes, you're absolutely right. When it comes to children and everything, I, I have no problems just yeah. murky, murking somebody. Well, so this is a cult where. When I started reading, I got, I know I just said it about the Tuesday night thing, but I, I really don't. Usually I can get through most anything and just think, God, I wish I hadn't read it, but keep reading and be okay. Everybody this loves the train wreck. This is the one that this, this other cult is one that I was really, I mean, maybe three lines in on the things that this guy did to like, uh, it was torture, but in what he would word it, it you know, is to, to make them his basically. Um, to cleanse them and whatever it is he's saying. I mean, I'll just like, like it started with like just the very basic thing that they had to do to prove their loyalty to him was to use mallets to break their own legs. Whoa. And that's where it started. So once I get to where it started, <laughs> that's his, that's his uh, easily digestible thing to read as, as the rest, the rest of it, it gets worse than you can imagine so and there were there were um, adults and children that were there you know as families there in this in this cult and so but that's what when bc and i were talking about it was you know what syndrome is that this isn't something that they've developed this is like you're there like you have you have this this compulsory need to belong somehow like somehow well, you're there and day one or really quickly you're you're breaking your own leg with a mallet there, there's a, I mean, that's that's a little bit extreme on that. What if you there's a movie called The Cult, uh, and it really deeps die on the true, uh, the truth of how people get sucked into these cults. It's uh, a mirror effect. Mm. Uh, actually, FBI actually used this kind of effect to uh, for hostage negotiation, and what Thanks. they do is. Uh, what they do is, is like the last thing that you emphasize, like if you say, oh, this was horrible. Oh, yeah, this was horrible. Now we have that connection. Mm -hmm. And you just keep on connecting, 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 connecting. Every, everything, you, like every third word or something like that, you can say a whole sentence. But as long as I do from what I was uh, reading is as long as I do the last part of what you say. We are getting that connection. I'm I'm making a report, mm -hmm. and after I mean, after the negotiations, they usually, uh, hopefully at the time, uh, the hostages are released, fanfare, blah blah blah. But the the, the theory of psychosis, it's like, uh, uh, I mean, you got kung fu, uh, the this uh, the uh, snake, uh. Uh, the snake, like the talkers, like the whisperers or whatever. The what are you talking about? Uh, the the cobra, cobra, uh, the uh, fuck, I can't even think of a word. The but snake the, handlers or snake charmers? Damn it, charmers. Yes, okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you, if you actually see how they're doing it, they're doing a movement. It's not the music. It's not uh, 
uh this the snake is you know copacetic it it it's a pet now no it, it's a wild animal no matter what the the cobra is going to be a wild animal what it is is the movement yeah the the snake sees the movement it's trying to track you as a predator yeah trying to make you do the same movement so you're doing the same movement as it and it's yeah. creating a rapport and that that uh, w with a lot of cults uh the only way to uh stop that and there is a guy i can't remember his name love the guy to death i love listening to the, uh some of his stuff on uh documentaries and stuff like that is how he gets the cult people out of the cult situation he's done this like dozens of times mm -hmm. he it, it's one of those things he just i'll do it and literally that he he'll t tell you in the interview it's like I was bored. Wanted to see these ki uh, kids get their home. So I went over there and I uh, started talking to them, snapped out of it. Now they're home. But he would just ask questions. Mm. I was like, why do you believe this? Well, it's because he's, I was like, is it you or is it him that's telling you? This? And he would break them out of the trance. <laughs> Yeah, that's so interesting. There's definitely a show I'd like to cover is just kind of diving into some of those and then just like the behavior behind it. Um, or, you know, what kinds of things do these people have in common? What kinds of, you know, like belonging do they need or why didn't they have it or feel like they did? You know, there's got to be something. It can't just be. Well, look at Alyssa Mack. I mean, that's the yeah. big case. She was she was a big star on Smallville. And it's even the stars, you know, uh, uh, Michael. Well, that's called Rosenbaum. sociology. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Michael Rosenbaum, he, he's like, I, I, I knew she was into something, but I just like, I didn't, I didn't really yeah. talk to her that much. So I just shuffed it aside and she's asked me to come on one of the meetings. It's like, well, nah. I think actually, you know, to your point, it, it might seem counterintuitive to believe this, but I actually think that uh, celebrities are as great of a candidate as anyone to join a cult. That that's what they're currently in, and I'm not even talking in political climate. I just mean in general, they're of an entire lifestyle where everything's a ruse. You make money by pretending to be something else. Yeah, exactly. And you need you are you you feel you are part of a group that you feel um, that you belong in. You feel needed and embraced and what and everything so, I mean, that's, is lovely every it's i i love him so much I, well and, there, and no one's telling you no all of the things so it's it's very much i mean it is a it is a modern day you know out in the open cult is what that is um but if you general, actually watch them like in a three-hour podcast and everything you you start seeing the cracks yeah and seeing all the all the all the craziness they they it was like i did this and the other person that's doing the interview is like don't you find that strange yeah like, Oh, yeah, it is kind of strange, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't even think it's like, you know, look at them. They're a celebrity. How'd they get in this goodness, right? That's likely one of your <laughs> easiest candidates to fall to fall into something like that. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, they made a whole big religion called Scientology because of that. And you start looking at it. You start deep diving in it. I was like, well, that's a cash grab. They got, we got one of those in Houston. The second... um. Oh, I know. And the second that Tom Cruise jumped on that couch, we all knew where this was going. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. Man. <laughs> and just Why? on the kit couch. Mm. It was it was ridiculous. But uh, another case that I went over with a friend of mine, and it just happened, it happened in Oklahoma. It, it, it was Lawton's like an hour away. Uh, Cedric Marks, uh, it, 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 the case is still going. They just got the grand jury, so I don't know if it, the, but he's already confessed to a lot of this stuff. Uh -huh. What had happened was, uh, what had happened was, and this will be the last one. What had happened is he actually went to Detroit, killed a couple people, came back to Oklahoma, killed a couple more people, and his girlfriend hid all the evidence. Yeah. Is that the one you were starting to talk about earlier when he called to ask her? Wait, was that? No, you were talking about Hernandez earlier. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. So her, did she hide the evidence? Okay. Cause this is something, um, and then you're right. We can wrap this up, but this is something that I've found to be interesting sometimes too. Like the 
the on first pass, like initially it's almost like they're panicked and they don't know. And did you do these things? And I don't know. And like, okay, okay, okay. And they comply and we'll hide the things and do what's asked of them. And then later, you know, give it a few hours or a few days. And they're like, whoa, you did what? And then they change their mind, you know, and they, they tell police what they know, or, you know, he asked me to hide this or, you know, whatever. Yeah, she, exactly. So is she, do you know, like, is she still like standing by her man or she's in prison with him? Oh yeah. Yeah. She, she helped get rid of the body. Oh, and she's, and she's pregnant with his kids. So she's having a baby with him and she's like uh she's like oh i'm gonna keep him it's like no you're not no you're not no no but yeah no, it, it it's that i don't know maybe she is dcs is so backwards in this country right now that um yeah. uh mm, i lost my train of thought oh that's another that's another real quick what that, that i was um reading about in terms of that histo i'll never remember this hybristophilia Hybristophilia. Um, in terms of that, like syndrome is another take on it. Like we said, it can be either a victim that uh, feels this need. It can be someone who's a narcissist and wants to be a part of something that's powerful. And then there's the thought, like you were talking about almost like the hunter. And maybe that's the part of, let's say if it's the woman, that's the part that she's then attracted to, like, you'll protect me kind of a thing. Um, so that's, something i was reading about yeah because the about- guy was an mma fighter so it, it might it, it's one of those things that just kind of connects with it mm-hmm. well and so like a lot of the women who wrote let's say richard ramirez john wayne gacy uh ted bundy letters in prison and the things that they would say it a lot of it would point toward um basically like i feel safe with you and like if if i'm with you then i'm safe from you it's a, it's a really twisted paradoxical mindset that doesn't make sense. It's not logical, but if I'm with you, then I'm safe from you because you won't do it to me. And then there's also the idea that, um, you know, that I'm going to be with you and, and you're going to, we will get together or be married or, or produce a family to where you will put a baby inside me that will also grow up to do these things. There, that's a yeah. whole separate rabbit hole of this behavior, but it's, um, yeah, it's super bizarre. Yeah, I mean, we could go on for hours and hours and hours on this, and I know you got to get uh, stuff going in your neck of the woods and your life. So we'll just go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, but thank you, Andrea, for coming on the show and check them out. Failure stop. She is on Tuesday nights, seven p.m. live. Get the watch the live chat with them. They 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 chat with everybody. It is a great show. I end up having to. I honestly do a show on Tuesday, so I have all <laughs> live show, no matter what, even if I'm off. But check these guys out. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Yeah, appreciate Bye. it.